I'm on a winning streak. I'm on a winning streak. I'm on a winning streak. Yeah, I'm on a winning streak. 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 Yeah, I'm on a winning streak. I told my lawyer, he knows I lied. I'm gonna call him to see what I can do. And y'all still let her come up there and tell the jury she seen me with a gun. And they hand y'all a book just like this of her medical files. You know people like just throw that out sometimes. Oh, this one's crazy, this one's crazy. No, that girl's crazy. Medical, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't wanna disrespect you because I know people got mental problems, but she has mental problems. They hand y'all a book like this of her Medical. Do the park, so I took the fifty thousand out of my pocket and did it that summer. Ah, and now they do the park. If I didn't do that, they now this summer they on the new park, right there, right there. They closed the park. One park we did, cause they about to do the whole thing over. Now the other park is there. We did a lot in society. Nah, uh, Sylvia, don't put me in jail for nothing, lie. And I got them guns from dumb. Yeah, you walk into the place, I got federal badges and all that, that's just from numb. I did everything I was supposed to did. I'll prove why I'm in New York. My wife and them driving me crazy. I'll have them taken from inmate funds. Man, that is DNA will have to be taken to us. Sir, look, look. They know why I'm in New York! I will tell what we do! My family here! We'll tell what we do! My family here, sir! I lived it and I had a ticket. I'm cool. I don't go to no club, never in New York. So told me I'm there 15 minutes. They said I don't see them. So it's just a guy's suit. Let's let you know. Violation of the gun registry act shall be a misdemeanor punishable by up to five years in jail. Okay, we're going to have to call him Did you know that becoming a rapper is the number one cause of death amongst young black men? Have you ever wondered why the incarceration and murder of rappers is so accepted and somewhat celebrated amongst today's society? Today we're going to explore an example of this phenomenon. Welcome to The Rap Trap, hosted by Ayo Conseco. Crazy shit. Welcome back to The Rap Trap. I'm Ayo Conseco, fearless leader of Ayo Nation and the Men Too Movement. And this is going to be a serious episode. As you see, I have the vest on. Um, if you've not went to the Patreon yet and seen um, the videos, the um, unreleased videos that couldn't come to YouTube, um, you're going to want to get there immediately. Um, shout out to all the patrons. Uh, we just had a good show this Monday. Um, shout out to all the lieutenants. Um, we'll talk more about that in a minute. Get to the Patreon. Um, so that because I'm this whole um, the five ways to identify a nab that's going over there this week and 
I'm not sure if I'm gonna put the Scotty Pippen video on there on the Big Face podcast. I ain't sure yet. And that's what I'm saying. Don't don't gamble. Don't 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 even risk it. You know what I'm saying? Just make sure you get to the Patreon so you get everything. Um That, 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 it's hard to watch a nigga in court. It's hard to watch a nigga in court. Um, I, I hate seeing a nigga beg somebody white. Please, sir. Please, sir. Like, I, I hate that shit. That shit, it, it, because at the end of the day, what you know is that that's what the fuck they're here for. That's what they live off of is a nigga. That's, that's, they've done their job at that point to bring a nigga down from his physical and mental superiority to show that, you know, like, yeah, you're bigger, you're better, and, and, and all, you got more swag, and all, you can dance, all these other things, but I can break you the fuck down. You know what I'm saying? I am superior. So I hate to see that shit. And like I, this is my whole mindset. Well, we're gonna, if, if we would, if we would, um, and I don't want—I don't want to say it. I, I don't want to even sound like man. This follows the goddamn law, bro. But in real life, I, I'm trying to tell you something. Like, dog, when I'm riding around now, dog, it don't matter what the fuck I'm doing. I don't give a fuck what I'm doing, dog. Like, dog, anybody say anything to me, just a uh, fuck immediately. I'm on go mode because I know I'm. I'm paper's good. Everything where it's supposed to be at. I'm not at headlight good. Brake lights good. Everything where the fuck it's supposed to be. So we can play this whole and the people know. People know what I stand for. And I want to get this to be a universal. This is the new stigma. This is the new stereotype. It's a black man. It don't matter what the fuck you look like. He niggas don't do that. Nah, black, black folks don't do that. So I'm pretty sure you planted that on him. We don't even play like that. We know that you looking at us trying to break us down. We're not gonna give you no motherfucking. We're not gonna give you the the. Uh, I hate. It. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna think of this fucking word. We're not gonna give you the pleasure of seeing us like that. And, and oh, what the fuck is this, my nigga? You riding around New York with uh, like real deal war shit. You got the vest. You got uh, uh, plenty of fucking uh, ammunition. Loaded pistols in this motherfucker. Submachine guns in this motherfucker. You riding around like a, you finna do a fucking rap video. Or go to war. And you know, even even further into that shit, it's like you wasn't riding around no coat to say. You wasn't riding around the suburbs fully loaded like this. You was riding around the hood ready to give it to any black man out here. Not anybody out here. I'm gonna get off of that. So let's go into this um, because it, it, it's a lot of layers here. What that video won't tell you is um, what he was talking about when he spoke on. Uh, uh, you let her go up there and testify. Who he was speaking of was his. They actually let three motherfuckers testify on him, and the three motherfuckers was his wife, his mistress, and his fucking girlfriend. What was it? It was the wife, the wife, mistress, and side chick. You know what I'm saying? Some shit like that. Um, I'll put it up so you can see it. But, and none of them were black. If you look at them, none of them looked like it was no black girls. And it's, and, and like, what does that say? What does that speak of? The way the picture was presented, it was him on top, and y'all probably see that too, and three, at least two white girls on it. And it's like, what the fuck you got going on? What the fuck do you, and it goes back into what I speak about when I'm talking about these children playing sports. You will get a, a football player, a soccer player, basketball, whatever the fuck, killing himself because he doesn't understand his sexuality. He's gay. He's gay. And not, this, this you know, he was, for whatever reason, he... He went that way because he wasn't born that way. For whatever reason, he went that that's the way he is, and that's you know, that's how his mind was fucking wired because of his fucking mama. But he never 
was able to act on that because forever and ever he's been this this, this fucking child star athlete and shit like that. And everybody's telling you, hey, go to school and everything is pretty much handed to you. You know what I'm saying? The camera's always on you. This is what you're supposed to do. Uh, all you know is football drills. You never know. And that's why it's so easy to go broke as a fucking athlete because all the fuck you've ever known is football, basketball, whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? So now when you get out here in the world, after you get your, your injury and you got to live like a regular person, what the fuck? So you get them getting caught up in all kind of different shit, but the main thing to get fucked up with is the money. Because it's like I, I never planned on managing on money because I've always had other people doing everything for me. When I went to college, motherfuckers was writing all my papers for me. I never had to do shit but be good at fucking football. That's my ticket. But now I'm hurt and I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. And, it, and it's a mental struggle and shit like that. And, and when I'm talking about the homosexual thing, it's like I never knew how to fucking say it type shit. Because you, you, you've been groomed, you know, from the beginning to ignore everything, just work, 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 work. And it's just like you'll get all these, all these things in an athlete's mind um, that he can't express because everyone around him is fake. Um, we'll t uh, I'm trying to be smart with my shit. Um, Choke No Joke spoke about, um, I should have did this video, when he spoke about Lala and what Lala and her homegirls, her dyke homegirls, were doing with Carmelo Anthony and his whole class. They were, got, they knew the stats better than niggas did. Because they're looking to see what his what what kind of um, chance does he have to go to the fucking league? These were fucking lesbians, and they were preying on high school. Like, oh shit! Oh, what? Uh, Eleven rebounds, twelve assists, goddamn, uh, averaging twenty points. Oh shit! Yeah. Hey, let me how you know what I'm saying? Like the fuck? But this is what it is though, because you are the money, and and let's be fucking serious in. In our little towns, in our little cities, nigga, these, you know, the star, the, the, the magical, you know, naturally talented football players don't come but every, no, once every, you know, you're going to have a motherfucker go to, you know, get scholarships and shit like that, but actually go to the league and get that money, that shit might not happen, but every five years, maybe that. You know what I'm saying? If, you, if we're talking about, like, stupid talent, might be every 10 years. So when motherfuckers... Catch hold you. That's what's going on, man. You don't. You don't have no moments to rest. You don't have no time to yourself because everyone's looking at you. Even the police, they'll cut you some slack. You know what I'm saying? It's just so it's dealing with that at a young age. It can fuck anybody up. Hey yo, what it do, man? It's your man Ayo Conseco. I'm tuning in with the Big Face Podcast. One. I can't do it. I can't do it. That just ain't my style, dawg. I just, I just gotta keep it real. Look, dawg, let me holler at y'all. Look, I don't put that Patreon, them numbers for the Patreon. That's for AO Nation. If you're in AO Nation, you need to be a Patreon. I don't put all the videos. They won't be listed on YouTube. So if you want all the videos and shit like that, you need to be a Patreon. If you want to contribute to the conversation that we have every Monday night, we go live on the Big Face Podcast YouTube channel at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. If you want to contribute to that conversation, have the call in number to where you can call in at any fucking time during those lives, you need to be a Patreon. I don't put those Patreon numbers in the men two numbers at the beginning of the show just so you can hear Winning Streak. As a matter of fact, if you want the whole Winning Streak single, all you have to do is send two dollars to the Cash App or the PayPal, um, and I'll send the song to whatever email is attached to your PayPal and Cash App. It's not that fucking hard. Um, but the Patreon is for AO Nation. I expect y'all to fuck with that. Um, and before y'all start asking, this hat is not for sale. Um, the markup on it is too high. I was just trying to see what that shit looked like for real. The markup is too high right now, so I have to sell that shit for like $30, and I'm not prepared to say that to y'all. Um, so right now we just have the men two t-shirts for 20 uh, Big Face Podcast. We got the new Navy Blue Big Face Podcast uh, t-shirt. Uh, 15, everything is 15 with the Me and 2 t-shirt. Then you got the Big Face Podcast Scully for 
uh, ten dollars deal. Go to PayPal.me forward slash Are You Serious Ten and put all your information in, motherfucker. Um, I salute everybody, all of my niggas, all of the me and two, me and two, me and two members, AO Nation members that have been donating to the show. As you know, I'm a nigga on YouTube, so it is what it is. So when you contribute, it's a big deal to me. Um, but don't go crazy. Uh, but every uh, third Sunday we do the AO Nation donation conversation where I shout out everybody who showed love uh, within that period and shit like that. If you don't want to be mentioned during that show, all you have to do is put no mention and you won't be mentioned. Um, but I really do appreciate everybody who shows love every third Sunday. It seemed like my message has went out there to where people know if you're a small business, you gotta have at least $100 for promotion. Uh, if you're an artist, you need to have at least $200 for promotion. Other than that, just leave me alone. I do this shit by myself, but I salute everybody for really giving me my time, giving my space to do what the fuck I'm supposed to be doing. So I salute you. you wanna go to work? Let's go to work. This IG sponsorship shit is not doing shit for you, and you know that. So handle your fucking business, holler at me. Let's get some shit done. I see y'all in a minute. Get the shit together, bro. Um, and who wouldn't get used to that, thinking that it's always gonna be somebody to take care of me? That's all you've ever known. You've been a child prodigy. Is that like, come on, man? Like, let's. Does Zion know how to fucking, you know what I'm saying? Manage fucking money. A lot of these niggas, uh, come on, man. They just have the money to pay you, motherfucker. But that's something different. What I'm saying here is he has. I don't un so it's on the same line. I don't understand how what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Cause the biggest thing about this, to be honest, is the fact that two biggest things. First off, your whole team is white girls. Secondly, you're crying in court. You're crying in court. My nigga, this ain't your first gun charge. This ain't your second gun charge. This is what, like, this is what you do. They caught you because you were riding down the fucking road with no headlights on. And the car smelled like weed and you had loaded weapons in the motherfucker. So we can say, uh, it didn't smell like weed. Uh, uh, so, and then you have to, and that's, see, that's the whole thing. That's when you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you can tell the court and you can tell the people whatever the fuck you want to tell them, but you and your people know whether or not you smoke weed. And this is where your fucking reputation comes in. If a police officer pulled me over and say, oh yeah, the car smell like weed. Nigga, everybody going to be at the fucking police station. What? What? Oh, nah, nah. Look at this bullshit. Hello? Stop calling you fucking faggots. Telemarketers. But, nigga, ain't y'all don't smoke no fucking weed? We know this some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? And that's what your it takes and it takes years to set a reputation. But people are more willing to stand with you when they know that you stand for something righteous and you actually live by that. Not that you just talking and you hear little whispers in the in the cracks and the crevices. No, nigga really stand for that. You know what I'm saying? It it would be something like LeBron James getting pulled over. We found a, a, a brick of cocaine in the trunk. What? You know what I'm saying? Uh, maybe that wasn't the best example. And it, and it, and it could be true, but that, that goes to another extent to where, who do you believe? If we know that the police are dirty and they're trying to, you know what I'm saying, destroy us, then you shouldn't, and that's what I'm saying, we need to get on the right side. Like, what the fuck? What, what, what are you doing, my nigga? What, you know how hard this is to defend? You were in a pickup truck? You and another nigga? And all of, and these are actual guns that they found in the car. 
No lights on. Smell like weed. You've been caught with this before. You've been caught with weed before. This fits your profile. This is your personality. And I, like I tell niggas, you don't got but so many motherfucking times. You don't got but so many motherfucking times before everybody gives up on you. What's going to happen is, you know, the first couple of times you get in trouble, motherfucker, like, ah, oh, man, it's all good. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, nigga, this, you know, little fucking up, nigga, young and shit like that. All good. But once it becomes a pattern, folks will start discommunicating themselves from you. Is that a word, discommunicate? Excommunicating. Excommunicating themselves from you. Because this is what you're known for now. That nigga, you know, that nigga stay in trouble. So the only people that will hang with you is people that don't have shit to lose. Because people that have something to lose, I can't I can't risk it to hang with, with Steph. And don't mind uh look your head. It fell off last night. Don't mind that. But I, I can't I can't afford to be riding around with uh, with uh Sebastian because this nigga prone to have anything. You know what I'm saying? He prone to have any fucking thing going on. So I can't really I can't really fuck with that too heavy. And this is see, this is the difference between an artist that um you got rappers who I, I'm with, you know, like, I don't give a fuck about nothing type niggas. Like, that, that's, I don't give a fuck about that and still speaking that shit onto the hood to give them something to die to. Giving them a soundtrack to die to. And this is why artists like East Coast Paper, um, artists like um, Low Village, obviously, you know what the fuck that is, but people who will give you the other perspective of someone who is has been out there, seen what it is, and it's obviously you know that's why I fuck with it. But someone who gives you the the outlook, especially this nigga East Coast, he from uh, fucking New York and shit like that. But giving you the just from a nigga with a mind, and that's the type of music that people is so difficult to get these type of artists off the ground because um fuck this nigga song um. East Coast Paper got a song called um, Chop It Up, I think. And it, it sounds like a trap song, but if you listen to what he's saying, he's really telling you what this shit look like from a nigga who, I know I got more to live for than this shit. You know what I'm saying? I know it's more to this shit than this. And if you listen to his project, you can see he got a whole lot of different, you know what I'm saying, theories and shit like that. And I fuck with shit like that, dog. I fuck with people who... It ain't just the same, blah, 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 watching the kids and flashing the woo! Nigga, the same, nigga, the bright and the vision, I'm fucking the vision, I'm fucking you. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the same cookie cutter, like, fucking your bitch, bright on watch, stupid icy, I kill a nigga with this extendo, 30 clip. That's it, that's the whole mixtape. I had a hard, we ain't had no food in the cabin, nigga, I, I went from sleeping on the floor. The same fucking shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I no longer am I entertained, nor can I get any substance for that from like just having a hard beat. Um, so shout out to East Coast Paper too. Um, but this is another reason why Sebastian made it to the rap trap and not the Big Facts podcast because this is all what this is. It's just a, a fucking, you know, nigga. I'm gonna let y'all listen to something. I'm gonna let y'all listen to something. This is this is Sebastian. Shout out to that. Um, uh, uh, we. This is this Sebastian at the Breakfast Club. We was always taught them type of things, not carrying guns and nothing stupid like that. But we was aware of how to clean the gun and all that type of stuff like that. Shout out to my. And this was November 12, 2018. Father, but for no reason as far as protecting myself or anything where I would, you know, need a, uh, any type of weapons. Did you I, always feel like your life was in danger? Um, yeah. 
I mean, that's kind of, I can kind of say that safely, like I'm a black man, like, you know, looking yeah. as good as I look. Like, yeah, I'm in danger. But even in the NBA, when you jumping off private planes with the team and everything, like... Um... Just, I guess those are just bad decisions. I ain't need none of that. I was supposed to just been focusing on ball and uh, figure out how I get three hundred million. Why did you feel like you needed that though? Like, what was? I that? never really felt like I needed a gun. Tell you the truth, mm-hmm. I never felt like I needed a gun. Any situations I ever been in with the law, if the law don't stop me, I'm going home. Everybody wake up, go about their day. Mm-hmm. This okay. is, this is you, not like. So what happened was you got pulled over. You were driving on a suspended license, speeding, and that's when they found the gun in the car. Yes. Okay. That's the recent one or that's the old one? That was the one with the Adidas deal. Okay. Right. So. Hold the fuck on, man. So. It's. This is his fourth gun. And see, that's a whole nother thing they need to talk about, too. Like, nigga. You got three and a half years. For having a whole. You can. You could. Like, you could have armed a small fucking militia with the weapons you had. And I'm saying this because I truly but after you, you, so this is November, you just got back, like you just now getting hit for this shit right here. Like you got a whole new charge where you in the car, no headlights on, smoking weed and shit. And that's why the fuck the headlights went on because you was high as fuck. Like he just said, on any one of those nights where they, they pulled me over, if they wouldn't have pulled me over, I would have went home. So he's saying that I don't really need the fucking guns. But it's something in your mind. It's something in your mind. And I think what it is, is the dope and the music. I, I made a post. I said, drugs plus the internet equal methadone and Xanax. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a fucking deadly combination. You you continue to watch this shit, and then another thing is, with niggas, you you steady trying to keep up the fucking the image of who you were back then. Because the worst thing for a nigga to hear is that you fucking fell off, which you know you fell the fuck off. Nigga, you was in the NBA, now you just a regular street nigga riding around on a fucking suspended license, speeding. Living like a rapper. This is why it's the rap trap. Because niggas just made you, oh, this rap shit, oh, nigga, I wanna. That's what rappers do. Riding around, fully strapped down, just so you can fucking go to the club. And when a nigga say, I got plenty of straps, you can say it along with them and really mean this shit. And now, it was all good when you out there living that gangster shit. But you niggas continue. To let it slip past your mind that all this street shit run to prison. The streets run to prison. So if you keep on running the streets, you're going into prison. There's no fucking... The only way not to go to prison through the streets is to either die or get the fuck out the streets. But as long as you're in the street, day by day, you're going closer and closer to the motherfucking penitentiary. Only two ways out. I'm going to get the fuck out these goddamn streets and be a lame and be broke, go to work, you know what I'm saying, go work at Wendy's, McDonald's, Zaxby's, janitor work, landscaping, pouring concrete, all the folks out there going, oh, you know who that is, that's a bad guy, they don't tell me. oh, that nigga must have fell off, all that, you had to deal with all of that shit, but see, we as niggas, especially niggas who then had some, you know, celebrity and shit like that, Nigga, jail seemed better than to have to go on the street and, and, and nigga, you, you got a fucking McDonald's hat on. Hey, I'm not take your order. Nigga, pull up like, hey, yo, what you doing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. You will be there, man. Fuck that shit. I'd rather get out of this bitch and, you know what I'm saying, break even. Every time I try to, you know what I'm saying, I, fuck it, just buy me an ounce, break even. Buy me an ounce, break even. At least I ain't got him, man. I ain't embarrassed. These hoes think I'm doing something. Go to the club. Just a, a fucking, you know, dead-end job. This is, the streets is literally a dead-end job. But you own this dope 
you listening to this music and this music will not allow because that's the music that you're listening to. When I wake up in the morning, I listen to either gospel music while I'm cleaning up the dog shit and dog piss. Um, and, uh, you know, feeding the dogs outside and shit like that. Or inspirational music or, you know, Negro spiritual. Something that's going to, you know what I'm saying, before I start my day because... You'll learn this later on. The shit that you put into your brain is what's going to come out. And it that's really who you turn into. And we don't understand that until we come out of the club for a long period of time. And then we try to go back in the club. And like, God damn, that music loud. I'm going to go on here and ride, bro. God, excuse me, bro. God damn. It used to be, nigga, you and this bitch, you just, you, you won with the party. You at one with this shit. But now it's like, man, excuse me, man, let me go and get the fuck out of here, man. These niggas in this, what up, bro? Uh, it, it is like, come on, man, I'm good, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? But because we don't back away from the picture, a lot of us, we don't back away from the picture at time to see the whole picture, we end up either dying or getting prison sentences that we never thought we could, you know what I'm saying, live out. Now, this nigga... Um, he got three and a half years. Like he got blessed the fuck down, and uh, they said three and a half. So I'm sure he wasn't um saying that you know he got seven years. All he going to do is uh, three and a half. He got three and a half years, which means you ain't gonna do shit. But on a three year do fucking nigga, maybe twelve months. Maybe twelve, but that that that's why he was crying because one thing when you're on that dope and you haven't been separated from that dope, I would just I just wrote down a, a, a note that I gotta do a video on what do you think? Cause somebody on the, on the ESPN it says, uh, do you believe Mike Tyson when he says that he spends forty thousand dollars a month on weed? Because obviously he has a show hot boxing with Mike Tyson. And I said, I'm gonna do a show about that that whole situation. And I wanna ask people, what do you think Mike Tyson will be like after two days of not smoking weed? Two days. All my real weed smokers out there, let me know what a forty thousand dollar a month weed habit will do to you if you miss two fucking days. So, there's not no telling what other things that Sebastian may have been into when you in the street and you and you riding around like this right here. Then, you know, Todd, they're saying that he had a Florida license for the guns, but not one for New York. Like, my nigga, you know what the fuck it is. You know what the fuck it is. We're not going to play this, this duck-ass game. Stop trying to act like these people going to cut you some fucking... That's what, that's all I'm saying, my nigga. Stop acting like these folk going to cut you some fucking slack. They looking for you to be one step off the line. One step off. If, you're not, if you don't have your shit all the way tight, man, them niggas taking that shit off the fucking road. And you know that. New York police ain't finna uphold no fucking Florida gun permit. You known for this. Riding around fucked up with guns in the car. Riding around fucked up, you trying to put a gun on a plane. Just fucking, and, you, and it's the same shit, same shit. And now you finally get three and a half years, you got to do 12 months. And now you're like, oh, oh we, we put, we, we, we put, oh, this. You, you turn around talking to your daddy and shit like that. And it's like, this, hold, hold on, hold on, hold, whoa. For you to be doing the gangster shit that you doing, riding around like this, you supposed to be a whole nother individual. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, he ain't no different than a lot of you niggas. A lot of you niggas is out this bitch just really living like that. You are living like this. You living like that. But as soon as you get in that motherfucking courtroom, <laughs> what? Oh, yo. Uh, you don't know what's going on. 
Now all of a sudden, oh, the system racist. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on. Hold on, dog. Hold on, dog. So you thought it wasn't racist? You thought the system wasn't racist. No, nah, you knew it was racist, but you didn't have no willpower over your fucking weaknesses, over your habits. For a lot of you niggas, jail is the best fucking thing. Because maybe at that point in time, you will be taken away from your weakness, your habit, even not even that, because you're going to get the dope in jail. Continuously, continuous, continuous. You keep on fucking up, and it's the same. You got the same. It's the same um, antithesis. Uh, it's the same antagonist. Um, you have the same problem. The problem is you're not sober. If you were sober, like I said, a lot of you niggas would not be able to do the shit you do. Um, like T. Ridley said, you ain't no killer if you can't do it without no mileage. A lot of you niggas would be the quietest, most humble niggas without that dope. But that dope has become who you are. Without that dope, you are no one. You are non-existent. You don't want to be seen. That's what this is. Now, uh, let's go down to, let's talk about these, 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 his, his choice of women. So all three of his women testified on him. Now, let's, let's go ahead and talk about that. Because you, as you saw in that one right there, um, they let his crazy wife, mistress, side, whatever the fuck, let her come on the stand and bam him. Which that's exactly... So if you don't... Here's the thing. You have example after example after example of what they're going to do to a black man as soon as he enters the courtroom. You're not going to be no fucking different. This is why I have no pity. This is why I don't give up this bitch. Man, that's fucked up. You goddamn bam that nigga. Boy, that's some bullshit. No. We passed that. In order for us to say... Nigga, in order for you to say that, oh, man, shit, I can do what the fuck I want, you would have to be blind to all of the injustices that take place in our um at our detriment we're losing every fucking day and the fucked up part about it is is that a lot of the shit that they take from us we give it to them willingly what i'm saying is stand the fuck up stand the fuck up stop fucking playing Actually, build on what you already have, but you can't do that because you can't put the blunt down long enough to get shit done. You can't put the pills down, the coke down, the heroin, whatever the fuck you want, you can't put it down long enough to even be no fucking body. You're just a, a bigger version of that dope. You're just a big ass weed bud, uh, 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 a big ass bag of dope. Not contributing shit, not doing shit, not being productive in the fucking least. You are a junkie, nothing more. Everybody around you know it. This is why no one fucks with you. The only people that fuck with you are people who are on that same fucking level. This is the only people that it seems normal to. And then your parents who just, uh, that's my boy. Your father, you know, he looked down on you and shit like that. But your mama, oh, you want something to eat? So that's why you hate your father. Because he, he's not, he, he's so fucking disappointed. He can't even hide the shit. This is why your old friends don't fuck with you. Because you went down this lane of just being a nothing. When your future was, you had so much fucking potential. This is you, my nigga. This is you I'm talking to. You are him without the, the, the NBA career. But what this shows you is it ends the same for every fucking drug addict that there is. Jail, because you're still in the streets. Under, you're not understanding me, dog. Damn. You think.
think when I say in the streets, the streets lead to the penitentiary, you think I'm talking about the trappers, the scammers, the motherfuckers that's out there doing shit. No, no, no. If you, and you don't leave the street until you're out of the street, meaning that you don't go back anymore. You're not going to uh, um, um, re rehabilitate anyone when you're a week out of the street. You understand? So if you're going in the street buying weed, buying coke, buying pills, you in the street also, you're headed to the same place that the dope dealer, that the scammer, that the robber, that the murderer, all are going to the same place because this, this, um, they'll call it justice, they'll say justice is blind, but this lever that's pushing, you should see it as an assembly line, this, this, this belt that you all are on going to the penitentiary which will be the furnace it, 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 it don't give a fuck who's on it this is just this nature it's like a river that flows it don't give a fuck who's in the river not gonna stop because you black white Mexican gay straight no I don't give a fuck about that I'm flowing I'm flowing if you didn't want to go where I'm going you shouldn't have got inside of me that's the river. So maybe that's a better analogy. You hop into the, what they call it, the waterfall, the, the lazy river. You all go into the same fucking spot. Until you crawl out that motherfucker, and you might uh, scrape your elbow, hurt, hurt your wrist or some shit like that, getting out that motherfucking river. But it's going to be better than where you're going. You understand? So... Don't but don't think that just because oh, I don't do shit but smoke weed, bro. You in that same motherfucking river, heading to the same place as Sebastian just uh, showed us. Because see, the issue with you motherfuckers on this dope is that you don't think there's nothing wrong with you because this dope, this this drug induced version of you has become so prevalent, you turn into him so frequently, Urkel turned into Stefan so frequently that motherfucker didn't even have to go in the machine no more. Like, I'm always Stefan now. You know what I'm saying? So now this is normal. This state of mind is normal. When you become sober, you're like, man, what the fuck is all these guns doing in here? Oh, I got to ride with these motherfuckers. I ain't no nigga finna get me. Matter of fact, hey, man, go get that goddamn uh, chop and shit, man. Go get my vest, too. You niggas trying me. So, as I said, a lot of you motherfuckers you will, um, if you go to jail, you'll be lucky. You'll be lucky if you go to jail because then maybe you'll have time to think, all right, let me see how, maybe you'll be able to, to, to see that there's only one common denominator here. The nigga said there was no threat. But you know what though? He did get robbed though. He got robbed. Nigga snatched his chain and shit like that. So whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Don't. Don't even, don't, he's, come on, man, that's, that's, I'm talking about you, you, you. What's your fucking excuse? My nigga, you've been in the same spot for years, for years. You hate where you're at in life, but you just, fuck this shit, yeah, yeah, what it is. You would not be able to deal with your life if you were sober. You wouldn't be able to bear it. You have to get high as fuck before you go to work just so you don't hurt none of them fucking people. But it's not them that you're mad at. It's where you are. Because in your mind, you're always in a constant battle. Your mind's like, man, we shouldn't be in this motherfucker. Man, we supposed to own some shit like this. The fuck are we still in here for? And that's where the anger come in at. And that's why you got to put that mind to sleep. You got to put that mind to sleep because if that mind take over and then your boss say, hey, you ain't putting enough cheese on that goddamn pizza. What, nigga? 
you already mad because you're not supposed to be there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, handle your business. Let this man right here be an example also for you niggas who keep on believing that, um, Let, I'm, I'm gonna just say this to you. The courtroom is where your bitch is gonna get, or that woman is gonna get her revenge. That's where she's gonna do it. When it's time to bury you, it will not be from her choking you to death, from her shooting you to death. It's gonna be in a courtroom. Fucked up thing about his situation is uh, his whole team told on him. So. He gonna have to call at least one of them, and like so, the mo same motherfucker that sent you to jail, you finna have to talk to them and ask them to send some on your books. So, you niggas keep on trying to fight the three S's. Do your thing, handle your business, and I'll keep on giving examples. Rap trap. I'm El Conseco. Make sure you hit that Patreon and make sure you hit that PayPal. I'll see you on the minutes. Love, love.